Fantasy, to me, is one of the most amazing genres. It takes you to these amazing lands of heroes, dark lords, dwarves, elves, trolls, necromancers, and magic. Fantasy, in fact, has grown so large and popular that there is now a distinction between traditional classic fantasy, the more Tolkien-inspired stuff in one camp, and other variations of the genre in the other. The land of Tamriel is a curious one, a land of classic fantasy tropes that we know and love, but it does well to subvert expectations, bringing about some of the most peculiar absurdities. Wood elves who out of a need to protect the plants are strictly carnivorous and ritually cannibalistic, not enjoying a single piece of lambus bread. Orcs who have a code of honor and desire a home of their own in a world where they are pariahs and outcasts. But the strangeness does not stop there. What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today we together are going to take a ride as I reveal some of the most peculiar and absurd lore that builds the world of the Elder Scrolls. Some that is even right under your nose. You may so choose to play a Khajiit, the humanoid cat-like race of elsewhere as far as you may know. The truth is that they aren't all that humanoid. In fact, only about 6 of the 16 variations of Khajiit share the approximate dimensions of a man. That's right, the Khajiit's form is drastically changed depending on the current cycle of the moons. To the uninformed player, you may expect elsewhere to be a land of walking cats, but you will find other sentient cats far stranger, such as the mighty Sench Rat, an enormous mammoth-sized Khajiit shaped like a tiger on all fours, or perhaps the Alfiq with the appearance of a mere house cat would greet you on your adventures. Despite their bestial appearance, these Khajiit are just as sentient as their walking and talking brothers and sisters. And that isn't the end of the absurdity. This race of catmen is culturally and religiously obsessed with a substance called moon sugar. So we have a race of cats that can vary in size from house cat to mammoth and also have a particular sweet tooth. It is unfortunate that the fate of many of these sentient cats would be that they end up in the servitude of the Dark Elves as slaves. Even the cats of elsewhere would find the land of the Dark Elves full of absurdities. Morrowind is a land of strange flora, like giant mushrooms protruding into the sky like trees, and even stranger fauna, floating jellyfish-like creatures called Netches, which are herded by the Dark Elves. And no simple chicken egg will do in Morrowind. The Dark Elves get their eggs from a mine, a Kwama mine. Kwama are insect-like creatures that burrow underground and produce Kwama eggs, of which their offspring hatch from. That is, unless a Dunma can get to it first, where it then becomes a meal of scrambled Kwama eggs with netch jelly and a bowl of salt rice. The Dark Elves don't stop being weird with their choice of cuisine either. The Telvanni wizards of Morrowind grow their houses from mushrooms and fungus. The warriors and adventurers of the land make their armor from the chitin of insects or bone. There exists a guild of assassins called the Morag Tong that have the legal ability to assassinate people. And up until the end of the Third Era, the Dark Elves worshipped their three living gods, Almalexia Vivek and Sothasil, referred to as the Tribunal. Some of the wackiest stuff surrounds Vivek in particular, coming from his sermons. Supposedly, Vivek is a hermaphrodite with the genitals of both man and woman. He also allowed Merlag Bal to have sex with his head, producing a bunch of demons, and he also snapped off Merlag Bal's penis, which became his personal spear, Muatra. Truly an odd bunch. But the absurdities are not limited to the races of elves and beast. Man too in the world of Elder Scrolls has its fair share of strange. You may think Nords just fantasy Vikings, but that would not be a fair assessment. The ancient Nords wielded mighty power in the form of the Thum. These warriors called tongues had no need for siege machines. They simply combined their voices and blew down the walls of a mighty fortress with their breath, letting their armies of barbarians flood their enemies. Curiously, the mighty Nords were once even turned into six-year-old children by the ghost of Alduin, which would cost Izmir Wolfarth, a hero of the Nords, his life to reverse the curse. You may even think of man being synonymous with the Empire, but you may find it even more absurd to know that the second emperor of the first empire, the Elysian Empire, was in fact a minotaur. You see, Elysia and her rebellion had the valued assistance of Morahouse, the winged man bull, son of Kine, a demigod. Alicia would have more than just his help, and the two would become lovers, and Belatza, the minotaur, would be their son and successor to the throne. 
It is said that all minotaurs come from Balatsa, and minotaurs were once fierce protectors of the empire, unlike the modern incarnations of the beasts that you see today. And Morahouse wasn't Alicia's only strange companion. Pelennor Whitestrake, an immortal hero who would spend his time in the Morethic era building kingdoms only to abandon them to wander the land of Tamriel once again. Pelennor is said to be a Shezarine, an avatar of the god Shore, and this would match up with his hatred of elves, leading to many massacres at his hands. The very name Pelennor means glorious knight, but it is a corruption of the elven name Pelennel, which means star-made knight. He wore armor of a future time and screamed the name of a future emperor Reman in battle. He is called Whitestrake for his left hand made of a killing light and his chest gaped open to show a red diamond heart singing like a mindless dragon. Many take this and speculate that Pelennor is in fact a cyborg from the future, which is a fun theory to indulge in. Did I mention that the whole Elysian rebellion happened in a jungle? Where you ask? I thought the rebellion was in Cyrodiil. Well, it was actually once a jungle. When Tiber Septim ascended to godhood and achieved Kim, he transformed the dense jungle of Cyrodiil into a fertile grassland. Let me show you the power of Thalos Stormcrown, born of the north, where my bread is long winter. I breathe now in royalty and reshape this land which is mine. I do this for you, Red Legions, for I love you! Some of the strangest encounters you may have are with the Daedric Princes of Oblivion. There is a particularly absurd realm of Oblivion called the Shivering Isles, home to the god of madness, Sheogorath. I imagine I would be burnt at the stake for not mentioning Sheogorath in a tale of absurdities. The Shivering Isles is a land of the crazed and fantastical. It features a man who is terrified of the walls falling down on him, so much so that he trades his house for a bedroll, a Khajiit who loves dogs, an Argonian called Big Head obsessed with a fork, a town called Split with two versions of its every inhabitant, representing the mania and dementia halves of the Shivering Isles. If you do ever adventure there, the craziness never ends, but there are other Daedric Princes who enjoy a little adventure here and there, adventures with absurd outcomes. Sanguine, the Daedric Prince of Debauchery, sends the hero of Kvatch on a fun little quest to liven up a Countess's party by using a spell to turn everyone naked. And let's not forget that long hangover style quest from Skyrim where the dragonborn in a night of revelry with Sanguine in disguise ends up fondling statues of Debella, stealing a goat, and even marrying a Hagraven. Not the most preferable reality to wake up to, one that may even make you want to escape your own reality for another. Perhaps you could escape into a world of your own creation. That is what Rhyth Lythandus does, a Dunmer man in Chadenhall who possesses the brush of true paint, an Adric artifact created by the divine Debella. It allows the user to create their own painted world which they can physically enter and do with what they wish. Imagine being able to jump into a painting of your own creation. In the world of Elder Scrolls, even the trees are weird. Falinesti is an enormous walking tree city of the Bosma. It is thought to be the original Elden Tree of which all the Grat Oaks are derived. This giant walking tree, which houses a city of wood elves, traverses the dense forests of Valenwood depending on the season, but at various times in history it simply stops moving and remains in one spot for reasons unknown. There are also the hiss trees of Black Marsh, incredibly ancient, sentient trees that communicate with the Argonian people. These lizard people of Black Marsh have a religious reverence for the hiss trees and ingest the sap from them. It is said that the more hissed sap ingested by an Argonian, the more reptilian-like the Argonian will appear. Argonians can even ask the hiss trees to change their gender, and for this reason, genders are sometimes referred to as life phases, implying that they may change multiple times throughout their life. Trees aren't the only part of the land that possess some form of wackiness. The Isle of Arteum in the Somerset Isles that houses the Sigic Order of Monks routinely disappears and reappears throughout history. Before the eruption of Red Mountain, the heart of Lorcan resided underneath it, and it is said to be the reason for the Red Mountain's existence. When Lorcan betrayed the Aedra at creation, Auriel ripped out Lorcan's heart and shot it into the sea where Red Mountain and Vardenfell would then grow from. 
Absurdity finds itself everywhere in the Elder Scrolls universe, in the most unexpected places. You may find an unassuming town in Cyrodiil only to find out that a crazed cult live in the caverns below and worship the Deep Ones. Or you may wander off and find a ghost of a bard who died trying to do an Olympic dive into the pool below. Or perhaps you can encounter the Headless Horseman. This is one of the reasons I adore The Elder Scrolls so much and why I love the fantasy genre. It has the potential to make the fantastical and downright absurd seem real and plausible, to suspend your disbelief. It is a beautiful thing. I encourage you the next time you are playing an Elder Scrolls game to search for the absurd, to realize the craziness it feeds to you so casually. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And of course, leave any video recommendations you have down below. Thanks again, have a great day, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again in the next one.